lovers. Whispers in the Sea is an actual play series drawing elements from stories of fantasy horror, political drama, and swashbuckling action and adventure pirate stories. As such, a list of content warnings will always be made available in the description. Eldora spent the whole time with Avery alone, I heard. Yeah, she has uh, taken uh, quite a liking to them. She's talking quite a bit more. I noticed. Everything that we promised we wouldn't do this time around. It's coming back to haunt us. I don't understand. Why is everything humming? Why is the helm humming? They have a connection to the stars, Avery. And for better or for worse, you believe. And that's what gives it its power. You call me sister and you say things like liar. Who are these people to you and who are you? Sister. Do you not recognize one of your own? Sister, I'm lost, and I have others here who've learned of the hum, and they're scared. I ask, what do you know, and how do I know you can bring us solace? Sister, I can bring you solace, because I have found it. You're just Eldorus. Yes, nice to meet you. So no one else can hear our conversation? What? No. I... Ah, well, that's fine then. What do you need? You seem to be desperate constantly. I need to speak to Avery. I, I, I think you overheard that, didn't you? I did. Where was he? It was Thorin, Hano, Katarina, and then Felix. Katarina was with Felix. That's why I came here was to tell you that I think you should be fine. To speak to Felix? Dangerous, that one, but not to you. I think he genuinely just needs help. Avery, I am an assassin for hire. Most people don't know this about me, although I think it is not surprising to those who learn it. Are you supposed to kill me? No, not you. I was supposed to kill Katarina, but I didn't, and I'm not going to, because I renegotiated contract, so to speak. But the person with whom I negotiated the contract, well, he, he wanted some things in, in return. Two, th two things. I need the arrow, and I need to borrow your journal. The arrow is gone. Yeah, the arrow is gone. Eldorus is correct. Oh, okay. As for the notes, I... They'd be dangerous in the wrong hands. I wish I could tell you that those hands weren't dangerous, but I... Avery, I, gen I genuinely don't know. I've fooled everyone that I've ever met in my entire life, except for him. sailors and welcome back to another episode of tales yet told an actual play podcast dedicated to telling weird and fun stories full of imagination thoughtful characterization and inclusivity i am your most humble of captains game masters and uh well uh, a pretty good sailor if i might say but with me today are the most what do I usually call you? Introduce yourself. Oh, wait, I forgot myself. You didn't even introduce yourself. Ah, shit. <laughs> I'm Kendrick or Kendo if you prefer. I use they, he pronouns, and with me today are the saltiest sea dogs a captain could ask for. Gus. 
Yar, I be. Uh, I'm not doing this. Um, yeah, I'm Gus. <laughs> I use he, him pronouns. I'll be playing Felix as per usual, who uses uh, he, him pronouns as well. I just think this is. I just think this is going to be a heck of a session here today, guys. A heck of a session. Can we just change it up and play different characters this time. Everyone just just can we oh, just yeah. rotate to the right. Rotate your character sheet <laughs> to the right. You know, what? I'm I'm going to be Walter in this episode. <laughs> Ooh. There's a talking weasel on the ship now. Avery, you're standing on the deck of a ship. A weasel stands in front of you where a man once was. <laughs> All right. You know who else is a heck of a time? Hilda. Oh, that's me. <laughs> a heck of a time. Jeez, uh, how do I follow that? All right. I'm Hilda. I'm going to be playing Avery per usual. I use she, her pronouns. Avery uses he, him pronouns. And yep, that's all. That's all the things I think. All right. <laughs> yeah. All right. You know who else is all the things I think? <laughs> Ellis. Aww. Yippee! That's so sweet. You mean it? <laughs> I do. Hello, my name is Ellis. I will be portraying Thorin and Eldorus, uh, who use he, him, and she, her pronouns respectively, and I use they, them pronouns because we gotta keep them on their toes. All right. <laughs> Ellis owns all the pronouns in this game. All the pronouns. And you know who else owns all the pronouns? Marceline. Can't have anything yes! in this house. <laughs> Hi, I'm Marceline. You heard it here. I own all of them. Every single fucking one. Hand them over. I play Bryn. Bryn only uses the she, her pronouns, but not for long. I'm taking those too. Soon, no one has any pronouns. You can only refer to people by their name. Yes. This is a conservative podcast now. Well, cut that part out, Zach. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, thank you all so much for coming back to another episode of Tales Yet Told. This is our game of Whispers in the Sea, where we are playing Rep Scallion, the Ash Can Edition, not the Quick Start version. But if you want the Quick Start version by Whistler, you can go to magpie.com and probably uh, find it on there. Uh, it's pretty dang good, but uh, we started with the Quick Start, and so we'll be playing it for the rest of the season, uh, just because there's not much left in this season and be a lot to change <gasps> now. Oh, did I spoil it? We're getting close to the oh, end? No. Theoretically. <laughs> the end is always a moving goalpost for us. But this is our Magic Pirate game. Uh, if this is your first episode, go listen to a different one. Uh, perhaps the first one, if it's your first episode. Because uh, that's usually how most people uh, listen to things or engage with media. But I'm not your parent. Don't listen to him. He's trying to make you not get the secret ending. Well, that's for another day. But you know what <laughs> is today? The waves. Bye-bye. Our camera fades in on the kitchen of the Bois Purdue. A line of the other crew members has formed out the door of the kitchen and like a little down one of the hallways as everyone is getting ready or is ready to get some delicious, delicious food. Johan does it good and everybody is still kind of coming off the tense energy of the last meeting. Um, there's still lots of people whispering about like, what are we doing? Is this going to be worth it? What's going on with Captain Hano? Hey, Thorn was kind of spitting. Um, is there perhaps, I don't know, should moves be made? Because I'm not quite feeling exactly the energy that Hano is bringing. This, this, these are the kind of things that you, Thorin, are being surrounded with in hushed tones as you are in here helping Johan and some of the other crew members who help cook alongside him uh, start to help feed people. I, I guess I'm interested, and in, 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 in anybody can help answer this question. What do we think that Johan's making right now? What has Johan made for dinner today? Johan has just come from the markets of Exerci Tula. So I have to imagine it, what? it would be some kind of... I could see kind of like dirty rice, seafood, mm. maybe some prawns. 
Dude, we got fucking like a fucking gumbo. Ooh, oh. it could be, yeah. Stewie. I could see yeah. a gumbo. Yeah, 100%. I mean, Yo- Johan, while born in Zegan, does have uh, Belanusian roots. And so, like, definitely, yeah, 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 yeah. I could see like a nice, like, gumbo, ooh, fragrant and savory, a little spicy. Ooh, ah, mm. I won't go. I won't go too much into the description. Uh, that's uh, that's from the. <laughs> We're furthering our reputation as the actual play podcast that makes you hungry. Yeah, we are. <laughs> so yeah, you uh, you are kind of here helping uh, feed the crew, uh, talking with Johan, and uh, kind of decompressing from all of the uh, stress of today. And I think it's as like the two of you are working. You know, you're getting some. Uh, uh, happy glances as you fill the bowls of uh, the crew members that Bryn, you show up floating in probably uh, from the ceiling, I believe, uh, into the kitchen. Uh, And Thorin, uh, you immediately notice uh, this happen. Honestly, Thorin is serving people right now. Specifically with Johan, Thorin is, with whatever politics there may be going on, or thoughts or feelings, or Thorin is very much just rolling with the punches. Thorin is not trying to genuinely give it too much mind, uh, mm-hmm. which may bite him later, it may, may not. That's for later Thorin to worry about, is his kind of feeling right now. He's just trying to vibe with, with Johan, honestly. So mm-hmm. Bryn will have to come to him. He will see Bryn and, you know, give her like a, hey, love, can I get anything for you? I think without speaking, Bryn takes a position on the line of the people serving and starts helping serve people as they come through. Thorin, how has it been um, since you've gotten back? I know there's been a bit of sound, a bit of a roar on the deck, and I imagine that could be discomforting. Sorry, um, how have you been? How was the excursion? No, oh, it's, it's fine. I... Lords, the excursion was, you know, we got the thing that leads to the next thing, some kind of coin. We got taken out by a bunch of radicels at one point, so if you see anything or feel anything snickering around, <laughs> let me know. Dreadful things, I wouldn't want them aboard, but such is the reality of being at sea. Um, I imagine it might be particularly uncomfortable for you to have some kind of pest. Oh, I've got pests all around me, and kind of nudges uh, Thorin. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he says, "Ha, ah, right, right between the ribs." Then. I can't say I blame you. I did want to, Bryn. If I'd known the link that you have with the ship, and the fact that it's not so much a link as much as it is a, I think as you say that, Bryn puts a hand on your shoulder from and goes, "Thorin, I appreciate the apology, but you had no clue, and to be fair." Without you knowing, and like as I'm doing this is like scooping a ball for someone else and handing it out, you still showed me immense kindness, despite knowing the totality of my existence. You're okay. I'm not upset with you or anything. I understand, but I appreciate consideration. I appreciate your dismissal of my... I need you to know that if I'd known your own autonomy was... I never would have questioned any actions you made with your own body. No matter how you feel, no matter matter what I did know or what I didn't know, I need you to hear it out of my mouth as a man, as a person, that I will support you. I'll do everything I can to not let anyone hurt you. And we'll do what's best for you first. And with your consideration in mind. Bryn, can I ask you something? Of course. But I just want to remind you, we are a part of a crew, a team. And in that, we all give up a bit of our own autonomy. Some more, some less. It is a tax you must pay so that the people around you can can trust you. But I digress. Continue, please. Sorry. I'm well aware. Why is this ship anyone's but yours? Why aren't you, Captain? I'm not good at people, Lauren. I'm not, let alone myself. But Um, it's a choice, right? It's a choice for sure. But in the same way, people learn to lean on their friends when they need help. I've learned that 
controlling a vessel like this, I'm not ready for it. I've been around for a long time. I've been through a lot of things and I've tried to do it myself. It's scary. It's hard. But having people around, people who know how to deal with the aspects I don't, it's one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen in my life. And it's why I keep people around. I need people, unfortunately. But it doesn't have to be bad. We all need people, whether we got blood, magic, or otherwise running through our veins. If we think, if we feel, we need others. I think as you say that, uh, you notice, uh, and I think that I think the two of you just kind of get lost in conversation for a bit. And I think it kind of dawns maybe on Bryn first and then Thorin that the person that is up right now is Katarina. I think the way that this like becomes apparent is like, you know, the two of you are talking and I think she hears, you know, that line, you know, we all need people. And she just kind of laughs under her breath, like a quick, like, <laughs> I guess. I think that Bryn like, puts out the bowl and scoops a like a like a full portion and then scoops a second full portion into the bowl noticeably in front of Katarina and kind of hands it out a little bit to her. She uh, kind of curiously looks down at the bowl, looks back up at you, and very cautiously, like, grabs it from you, nods, and says... Uh, as as Karina goes to grab it, Bryn kind of pulls it back a little bit and goes, Uh-uh-uh, I think that maybe we need to have a little conversation, if you wouldn't mind. <laughs> um. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, I will just, uh... Thorn starts to scoot towards Johan to give you two space while obviously still listening. No, no, no. While, while locking eyes with Katarina, Bryn takes um, her other hand and, like, grabs Thorin's coat and pulls him closer. <laughs> oh, shit. And, and Thorin, having just had the conversation with you, especially just like, okay, <laughs> and, and leans back into you. I think we cut from this to uh, where do you go have this conversation? I think it's in the fucking lunch line. Just here in the lunch line in front of everyone? Um. Do you pull them, like, to the side of the, the kitchen area, at least? Or? At least so not everybody, every person getting SpaghettiOs hears your dirty laundry. <laughs> I don't think Bryn, like, understands, like, the importance of doing that. Okay. And I think Bryn, like, almost, like, kind of, like, floats a little bit. Like, I'm assuming there's, like, a little, like counter that we're like in like almost like a cafeteria right where like you have like the like the out counter that you're like at right uh, well it's not like a full cafeteria because it is it's literally just people in a line walking up to someone with a pot it, with a big ladle yeah, no, makes, and pouring it in i don't know why i imagined like a, like a industrial kitchen this is what johan has put together which is magnificent by the way no on yeah, yeah, board yeah. a ship um i think that Bryn. yeah i don't think Bryn necessarily like is concerned about like other people hearing yeah i only bring cares okay then yeah no we can just continue this conversation then from there cool bren like uh yeah doing that doing some brain kind of throwing back like looks back is like you've got a peculiar look about you since you came back from a little excursion and i'm going to be honest with you i've seen your death and i don't know what that means but i don't want it to happen or if it already has happened i need to know you can tell, like, immediately, as you mentioned, I have seen your death, but I'm not sure if it's happened yet. Immediately, her eyes, like, widen, and she goes, what? What are you? Uh, uh, I don't, um... Young girl, I urge you to speak up. What do you mean you have seen uh, my, my, my death? Do not misunderstand me. I do not wish you harm, but I have seen your blood spilt. And, like, as she says that, like, takes, like a, like, a scoop of, like, the, the jambalaya and, like, pours it back into the bowl and is, like, and I have seen these pretty hairs of yours on this wonderful head, no longer attached. Katarina, you are in grave danger. Or were before. I'm not sure which. Give me a size up, I believe. That kind of seems what you're doing when you, yeah, you're trying to size someone up. Uh, you're trying to get some information about her, how she's feeling right now, and what's going yeah. on. Uh, so roll plus vinegar. 
That is a seven. Okay. Oh, shit. Yeah, on a seven and nine, you hold two. Uh, so you get to ask two of those questions, but uh, she is also going to hold one and potentially ask you a question. I think the question is, how can I get you to trust me? God. <laughs> what a question. Hmm. Uh, how does uh, Bryn ask this? Bryn goes, Katrina, I promise you, whatever your wealth or treasures may be, I have no interest in them, you see. I am a little tethered to something else at the, at the moment. But I do promise you, if you wish anyone on this vessel harm, I will find out. I will know. I protect the people that are aboard my vessel. That includes you, and I'm willing to help you. I need to know what I can do to make sure we're all safer here. I think she hears you and uh, kind of for a moment like looks between you and Thorin and then back to you and she says well it's just fun oh no I've been doing her voice wrong I know what her voice is I'm about to switch it though audience just let it happen cope <laughs> <laughs> well well uh if I'm uh, look I just want to have another a normal life on this ship I just want to be a sailor, a pirate, just like the rest of you. I I feel as though uh, there are some things potentially uh, preventing that uh, from my past. I guess I just, look, I appreciate it. I just need to know the truth, I guess. I just, I, um, I'm kind of sick and tired of uh, people lying and uh, hiding things from me. It's pretty exhausting trying to tell the, 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 the truth uh, from falsehood. So, I guess, um, speak plainly and speak true. That's all I ask. I guess I, I, I have a, a question in uh, reference to uh, the thing you s saw. But of course. Did it happen to in, in, uh, involve Felix? Friend's eyes go wide. It just, I, um, you know, you might know better than me, you know. Uh, you kind of know everyone, I guess, a little better than uh, I might. I, it's just, I don't... Uh, is he okay? Is he fine? Is he, uh... Bren leans close. To tell you the truth, Katerina, I'm not sure of Felix's involvement in this. The boy is quite disturbed, I can tell you that much. I think he's a good lad. I think he means well. A bit sporadic, a bit of a fireball, a bit violent. I wouldn't fault you for suspecting him of foul play, or intending foul play, I suppose, if you're speaking to me now. I don't know of Felix's involvement. All I saw was your dismembered head in a black abyss falling like the heavens. Oh, that sure is something. You're telling me. Would it be appropriate at this point to hear chittering in the rafters? Yeah, 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 yeah. As uh, I think Eldoris has uh, made her way down here from uh, the, the conversation with uh, Avery and Felix. Eldoris. As you fly down here and you see Thorin and Bryn are talking, you can see... And Katarina. You can see that they are talking to someone, but for some reason, you can't make out any detail of who this person is. Their details are, like, smudged, like paint across a canvas, moving and shifting as they do, but you can't you have no idea who this is. You don't know what's going on. You've come down to see a strangely smudged, kind of foggy person that Bryn and Thorn are just kind of talking to. And you see like the line of people who also are like a little like annoyed that they're like, okay, <laughs> this is, what's going on? <laughs> what's going on right now? But yeah, you see them talking to this weird figure. Awesome, awesome and cool. Cool. That's really sick. Eldorus does not struggle to recognize people. This is not a normal thing. Names? Pff, who can say? Faces? She doesn't forget a face. Eldorus, just to speak clearly for the audience, has been awake since before the battle happened. She got very rattled. Her and Thorin, uh, after f finally being able to find Thorin, went to bed with Thorin, 
wasn't able to sleep, then proceeded to go and make bestie friends with Avery. Bird's been through a lot. She started talking. She told herself she wasn't going to talk to people. Now she's talking to everyone. She can't shut up. And now there's a stranger she can't make out. It's Bird. So that is the context going into this. <sighs> she flops down uh, in front of Thorin and Bryn on the table. I imagine that there's, you know, there's the table. Thorn and Bryn are on one side. This other person who is Katarina is on the other. They're talking. And Eldorus plops herself down, splat, right in the middle of that table with her back facing Thorin and Bryn facing Katarina. And immediately she says, Who are you? Uh, I think Katarina, like, looks down, has the obvious, like, Bryn, you made this face not too long ago. Thorn, you've probably seen some people make this face. But it's the, did this bird just talk to me face? In relation to where we're in the galley, where is Felix and Avery in relation to in the ship? They are up uh, on the deck currently. They are probably still finishing up their conversation. Cool. I want to use maybe Twist Fate or Spitfire to do harm to myself to create holes in the top deck and bring both Avery and Felix down to the galley. I mean, Eldorus, you could just ask her. She'd just go get him. She'd just go get him. <laughs> but that's kind of cool. <laughs> I think that's really good. I think it's really good. <laughs> You're going to freak the shit out of Thorin because he's like, I have no... What is the context <laughs> for... What do you mean you don't know who that is? Ah. Uh. I just have a question. Is it like... Are you just bringing them here? Or are you taking, like, all of you somewhere else in the ship? Or are you just bringing them here? I, I'd say for one harm, I would, like, I think, like, Brim would, like, like, I don't know, like, break a rib or something, and a hole goes through, like, the ship, and they fall into the galley. Maybe, like, two ribs, and we all fall down, like, through holes in, like, through both floors into the hole of the ship. I'm, yeah, I'm cool with that. Uh, when you twist fate, roll plus spitfire. Alternatively, you can spend one luck right now and treat it as if you... I don't have luck. You start off with the max amount of luck that you can have at the start of a session. Wait, really? At the start of a session? Like, even yes. doesn't every, carry over yeah. the... Yeah, everybody always starts off every session with the and max amount of luck. you get luck equal to your spitfire, yeah? Correct. Cool. Then, yeah, I'm just going to roll the 10 plus on it. I'd say I take two damage. I take two harm then if I'm rolling a 10 plus, though. Yeah, no, I'm down for that. Cool. All right, Cool. Describe. Describe what happens. Um, I think that, like, in the middle of this conversation that, like, Bryn is having with Katarina, and it's, like, very tense, very emotional, Eldorus comes in and starts speaking and, like, doesn't recognize Katarina immediately. Bryn notices that Thorin is, like, distressed and that everyone in the room is rambling. Everyone in the room is, like, talking under hushed tones. There's so much noise, so much sound. Everyone's talking. Avery and Felix... Bryn knows they're up on the deck above. Bryn can feel their footsteps and their voices hitting, uh, bouncing off against like the the mass and the floors and everything. And like Bryn like feels everything right now and is so just like overwhelmed and confused. Bryn like just like for a moment like looks across the room and goes, "That's enough!" And just like just like takes her fist and like slams her hand into her own like chest. And you hear like a crack and snap as two holes open up in the deck and Avery and Felix fall through and um, like, like holes beneath them in this in the galley open as well. Avery and Felix, this happens to you. What the fuck? Right after Felix goes, <laughs> welcome to my world. Two yes. holes open up yes. under you. <laughs> so good. <laughs> and you fall through this so hole. Oh so my good. god. When they, of course, make a, a TV show adaptation of this podcast, it is literally just like that the previous episode just like ends. Felix says, welcome to my world. And then they fall through the floor. And that's <laughs> the end of the episode. Then you yeah. to black. Oh, my God. That's so good. It's the end of the season. You don't have to wait till <laughs> next season to see what happens. Yeah, similarly, underneath Katarina, underneath Bryn. No, Bryn just goes through the. No, well, underneath Bryn and underneath Thorin. And as Bren is, like, falling, like, Bren kind of, like, reaches out for Aldoris and, like, like 
holds her. If like, I mean, yeah. And then like they go, and then everyone falls to the bottom. Is there any way I can keep the soup the or the the gumbo? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Poor awesome. you. On. Our camera is looking at the scene of all of you in the kitchen as all of this noise is happening. Eldoris has just uh, uh, made her statement and all of these holes have just opened up in the hole. Uh, Avery, Felix fall down. The three of you, including uh, Katarina, fall down. And our camera stays there as the wood of the ship cracks, creaks, breaks itself open as all of you fall through and then begins to shift, reorient, crack, creak, and break itself back into place as if nothing had changed, as everyone in the kitchen sees it happens, and there's just silence for a moment as they all look at each other. And then there's this moment where Johan just goes, all right, and then I get uh, stands where you all were, and I'm like, all right, who's next? <laughs> goes to keep serving. Can I yes. just establish real quick? Like, we fell mm-hmm. from the top deck. That's Correct. like three stories. Mm-hmm. You're We're fine. good? You're good. But it's like magical We're good. falling. It's like You're magic good. falling. Cool. Yeah. You're good. You're you, good. You, 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 fell, you fell one floor, and then you hit the ground, and then another hole opened, and then you fell there. You're fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Splat. Yeah. Splat. Yeah. <laughs> Splat. <laughs> okay. We cut to the hold of the ship way at the bottom where Bryn uh, well where Thorin and Avery the two of you found Bryn the night previously uh post the attack all of you I imagine most of you did not land on your feet um where just having as some of you might have but I'm imagining a scene where all of you are just kind of splayed out on the ground uh, except for Bryn, who has floated down with Eldorus and a bowl of gumbo in hand. Oh, feels a little bit like a fuck you. Oh, what the fuck? Uh, Bryn like comes down, flowing through the hole, and like Bryn's hair is like up and like floating above her, and like this like kind of like fantastical way, like defying gravity, and her eyes are like glowing very brightly as lo- like along with her tattoos. And kind of like in an echoed tone, because like it's like bouncing. Her voice seems to like come from like the walls of the hole itself. Bryn looks at all of you and goes, Thorin has warned me that there was pests on the shores and that they might have come back with us. And I fear the pests come more than physically. I will not have our crew speaking in hushed tones of one another. Felix is just staring at the ceiling of this room and just says, you know, most people just just come and find someone when they want to talk to them. What the hell, Bryn? Did Thorin... You cracked your own ribs to do this. Thorin yes. was right next to you. Yes. <laughs> he would have heard that. Yes. He would have seen that. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> Thorin, after having watched this lovely person who he was just having a conversation with before the Katarina thing seemingly break her rib cage open and then we fall through the floor after rolling up from being on his back he rolls onto his knees and he looks up at you he says Bryn Bryn are you are you all, are you all right no Thorin I'm not all right matter of fact your ribs you Eldorus is speaking now. Avery's lost his mind. I'm Felix sorry. as being called a killer, a murderer. I've seen Katrina's head. There's oh a woman who's speaking to me in the expanse of space who I've never heard of before. She calls me her sister. And you, Thorin, you seem unmoved. Firstly, Bryn, I'm I'm quite certain you have seen me kill people. Um, Not the people I care about, Felix. That uh, that makes more sense. I'm sorry. I, can we, I'm losing my mind. Is that is that what this is? Is this what that okay. is? Are you telling me that I'm going insane, okay. with Bryn? Okay. Why didn't you just say that before? All right. All right. Everybody stand in a circle. Avery definitely like landed like flat out on his back. Yeah. <laughs> so everybody like, stand in a circle and then sit on the ground. We're all sitting on the ground in a circle. <laughs> I think that on the ground um, of the hole, a fuchsia and teal circle appears, like glowing on the ground with like, I guess, two, three, four, five, six spaces of like circles for individuals to sit inside circles around the ring. 
Um, Bryn Excellent. Goes in. Thank you, Brit. Uh, Bryn takes a seat and then sets <laughs> Eldorus inside one of the circles. Thank you. <laughs> I just like Thorin being like, hey, yeah, guys, let's talk this out. And then Bryn just like summons some sort of like <laughs> ritual, like some sort of like oh, ritualistic, my... like magical circle. Uh, honestly, I'm, okay, I'm going to say this, there's, there's probably a sigil of some sort inside the circle. I'll draw it out later. Yeah. <laughs> Great. When you put Eldorus in a space of her own next to you, she looks up at you and goes, Oh, you gave me my own space. Thank you. Of course not. Who are you? You there. Katarina slowly <laughs> sitting up from having fallen, <laughs> having just learned a bird can speak, and then being thrown <laughs> through the ship, slowly, like in a daze, gets up. I, uh... What the fuck is going on? Uh, <coughs> what? Oh, shit. <laughs> it gets up and slowly <laughs> goes down to sit. And yeah, Eldorus, it's still the same kind of smudged, smeared, foggy appearance. I would say as soon as Eldorus asks that again, Thorin knows that yeah. she knows who that is. And yeah. so we hear Thorin, El- Eldorus, that's, that's Katarina. What are you talking about? I, uh, she's, that's not right. It's not right. Okay, okay, okay. Let's, she's not looking right to me. Okay. What? What do you see when you look at her? She's been swallowed by the ocean and the waves are distorting everything that I see. I can't see her. I don't understand. Are you okay, cat? I I I I'm okay as as far as I know. Okay. Well, doors. Yeah. Love here. Yeah. Is there somewhere you can maybe rest or Avery, can I sit in your bag? Um, Avery finally like sits up and stands and like walks over to where Eldorus is and just kind of opens the bag as an offering. Doesn't say anything yet. She hops in there um, and she she actually looks at you. She said, um, I don't want to lose my spot. Can you put the bag in the spot so I can lay in it? I go ahead and put the bag in the spot and then take the spot right next to it. Okay, thank you. I didn't want to lose my spot. I'm going to go <laughs> to sleep. Felix has um, been lying on the floor, uh, face down. <laughs> and yeah, that's the, Avery was yeah like lying on his back, just looking at the ceiling. So yeah, and, same energy. And uh, uh, he he like he like gets up and like stumbles a bit and goes, "Sorry, I uh, think I landed a bit hard there." Uh, <clears throat> that's rough. You you need a hand. And no, form. I'm okay. I'm okay. Um, right. I pre- appreciate appreciate it. Uh, of course, of course. So who's um, killing who? Felix, like, I guess takes uh, takes a spot in the circle next to Katarina, and <laughs> oh no! <laughs> before sitting down, he like kind of whispers to her, and he says, "If the bird can't see you, I think that means it's working." And then he takes a seat. You see, she glances over at you, a little confused. Like, getting your meaning, but confused as to what what that's supposed to mean. You yeah. Know? Yeah. No, of course, because that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, no, not at all. Yeah. Anyway, he takes a seat. <laughs> Honestly, like, kind of eyeing up Felix as he sits down, like, in a very defensive way, where it's, like, changing the way that she sees Felix a lot. Brynn is kind of like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, who the fuck are you? <laughs> um, but also at the same time, like, sets, like, uh, I think he's, like, sitting down in, like, the spot in the circle and, like, Sets down, like, the gumbo and, like, slides it towards Katarina, like, kind of, like, casually. She nervously, like, takes it from the floor, like, slides it over uh, to her, and she doesn't eat any of it right now, but just kind of, like, puts it in her lap. Well, in my opinion, if we're all involved, information needs to be explained. There's only one person to do it. Avery, what the feck is going on? <laughs> Start from the top, please. <laughs> You just work us through it. That's so good. <laughs> Avery just stares back at you dumbfounded. It goes, 
Well, that's kind of the question I had, because I just fell three floors. No, nonsense. You, I guarantee goddamn to you, you know what's going on here better than probably anybody. I'm not saying you're keeping anything, but I'm guessing you've probably learned more than anyone here. You don't have to understand it, but what has happened to you? Avery, like, gets his notebook out and starts flipping to where That's he's taking notes on all Good these things. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't really know where to start. Do you have any specific question? Uh, <sighs> I learned quite a bit about Eldorus. We talked a little bit about that. I have an idea of where that's going. Good lord, look at her. She's already passed out in there. I learned quite a bit about Felix. Oh. I learned quite a bit about an incessant hum that will apparently drive me mad at the end of the day, so that's nice to know. It's not driving you mad, Avery. That is, a, I like point over at Brit, like, like a little bit of an accusing finger. That is not what you just said. The hum means you've already gone mad. Okay. All right. Not to be accusatory towards you, Felix, but I'm now going to ask Avery what you've been up to in front of you. Avery, you've been having conversations with Felix lately. How is that relationship going? It could be better, but it could be a lot worse. Well, that's good. Felix, Felix just goes, I thought, I thought things were going pretty well. Oh, that's good. I mean, you did want to steal my notes, so I'm still working on that portion, but... I uh, say yikes. That's fair. It's very fair. Why were you trying to... Why, why'd you, uh... <clears throat> why'd you have sticky fingers, Felix? Are we sure we don't want to start with someone else? I mean... No. Felix is what, uh, what, in uh, service uh, or working for some entity, um, unknown to us. Poss uh, possibly you're... malicious. Uh, yeah. wants access to all of my notes, which definitely should not be given out lightly. Also, was very interested in that arrow that you gave me as well, Bryn. Well, didn't give me, but the arrow that you summoned, which is now gone, by the way. Which organization do you work for, Felix? I know there's one. I don't know who, but I know you work for someone. Well, um, you, you would technically be correct. Yeah. Um, that's, that's not exactly what Avery is talking about, though. What is Avery um, talking about? Um. No one's gonna throw you off the ship, Felix. I don't care what comes out of your mouth. I don't know that for sure. <laughs> I don't know that for sure. My that, hand on Eldorus's feather. My hand on her pretty little head. I will not throw you from this ship in this instance. I'm not worried about any of you. Felix kind of eyes Eldorus a little bit. Oh my God. She is dead asleep. You hear snores every once in a while. <laughs> uh, even so, Felix Felix speaks in a uh, a very hushed tone, um, and he says, "Well, for one, I work for the sparrows." <laughs> That'll do it. <laughs> is, this, is, this, is that that funny, or is that more of a grim laughter? That's a grim laughter, bud. That's a right mess you got yourself in. No, yeah, I, I, I am well aware of that. Felix, what are these sparrows? Assassins. Well, of course, but what does that mean? <laughs> I could have told you were an assassin day one, Felix. Ah. Uh. <laughs> you know, I, I figured it was pretty obvious, but surprisingly many people d are, were not aware of that circumstance. But they, they hired me to kill Katarina. Shit. What did you do? Obviously, you didn't go through with it. No, but the sparrows are devious. They are very, very clever. Yes. And they do not take kindly to unfulfilled contracts. So I, I had to get creative. Understood. Which is where the other thing comes into play. I have a question. Is when you say that, can is there a way that I can use a point of luck and take one harm to snap one of my fingers and bring the head down through the hole? Oh. <laughs> I, I know it's there, right? So I can feel it and feel it's in the room. Can it just be like, be like, yeah, I had to get creative. Head Funk. falls in the middle yeah. of the circle. <laughs> head falls in the middle of the circle. And Felix goes like, yeah, like that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I'll allow it. 
Cool. I'm using my luck, taking one more harm. And like, like Bryn like takes her thumb and snaps her thumb backwards, and through the, through all the floors, you hear like, vroom, 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 vroom. you hear a few screams. Yeah, as yeah. Her head falls through the ship, <laughs> and like it hits the ground, and kind of bounces. Gods above and below us. Look creative like this, Felix. Bryn, your thumb. <laughs> Felix looks at it and he says. Oh, I am so... Katarina, you should probably look away, by the way. I am... <laughs> Katarina sees her decapitated head flop on the ground in front of all of you in the middle of the circle. And immediately, like, eyes wide, mouth drops, and like a... Oh, God! And uh, gets up, goes to a corner, and starts vomiting. Yeah, Felix, Felix says. Felix says... That was pretty close to my reaction, too, but obviously not. Bryn. Bit of a different circumstance. Bryn, please stop. Please don't hurt yourself again. I want to get everything settled on the ship first, Thorin. The last day has been conversation after conversation of whispers behind one's back, and I'm quite frankly tired of it. Okay. Can you set it back? I can set it if you... It's... Sort of a one-way street, unfortunately. Ugh. Yeah, I think that, like, Bryn, like, around the head, like, the, 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 the circle of, like, two and fuchsia that's around the head, um, parts of, like, strands of the light come up and, like, go around the head and start, like, creating this sort of, like, orb of, like, light to block out, like, sight of it. As Bryn is doing that, or as that orb is forming, Felix says, No, I, I, I still might need that, so don't, don't get rid of it. It's not going anywhere, Felix. Just making it a bit kinder on everyone else. That's not protocol, is it? For assassins to return a, an entire head? It's a bit much, isn't it? Well, it, it varies. We, we all have our personal tastes on how to handle things, but... Mm. You know, it's, 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 not, it's not my typical uh, uh, modus operandi, but... Uh, I'm honestly glad to hear it. I assume your typical is a pile of ashes, no? Well, if it comes... I mean... Sometimes, yes, but I mean, no, I mean, so, it, most of the time I just go for the go for a quick, quick one on the throat. But, you know, this uh, circumstances change. I'm interested in Avery's reaction to this head. Um, just still has the notebook open because he was referring back to all the stuff that he wrote down. And mm -hmm. I think almost unconsciously is like watching all this unfold and still writing down some notes about people. <laughs> Like, uh -huh. the head falls in the middle of the thing, and he's like, oh my goodness, like, eyes wide, and just, like, writes a note <laughs> about writing. what the heck's happening. Like, oh my good God. God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's more like, yeah, just absorbing and trying to figure out why the fuck he's been brought into all of this and why Katarina is suddenly in the middle all of all of this. Mm -hmm. So he's just sorting through the pieces and taking down some information. Mm -hmm. Well, as a fancy decoy you got there, Felix, you want to uh, explain the powers that be behind it? It's quite a craft. Yes, it is. It's, I think it is functionally the, the exact same as the real thing. I can see that. I'm just imagining this is like a scene where it's like, I, I imagine it's like almost like a coming out scene from like a movie where it's like, all right, guys, well, you know, Meet Damien, and like Damien shows up. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> so I, I was gonna bring this up. Mm -hmm. I was gonna bring this up. Bryn does know about about Damien. I was gonna say I do know. As I was asking Kendo, yes. like I know about. You don't Damien, know right? specifics, right? But you do. Right. You are aware that Felix is tied to an entity of some sort. Uh, yeah. Up to you all if you know the name specifically, but. Is Thorin, is Thorin attached to any entities do we know of? Not that you know of. Okay. Not yet. Because uh, I was thinking <laughs> in my head, it's like Avery's like, I, I think it's funny in terms of like Avery being like, am I going crazy? And like looking around a room of people who all have like, in like, like immense yeah. like attachments to these like dates like it's like exactly you are, it's like a, it's like a person who like is neurotypical hanging around like a like a whole group of people who are all neurodivergent it's like wait yeah. are you telling me i might be neurodivergent it's like <laughs> look it look a fucking round look at all the people you hang out with <laughs> exactly <Yeah. laughs> 
So Avery like looks up at that that comment about Felix being in service of some other entity and looks over at Felix and says, I think we'd all benefit from knowing a little bit more about that, Felix. If there's not just the sparrows involved, I think there's present danger to all of us. Felix looks at Bryn and he looks like just really nervous and he kind of swallows and and Bryn looks at Felix like back and kind of does like a well go on like kind of a hand movement. He says, well, Bryn knows some of it, at least. I mean, anyone that does what I do has to be, you know, strange in some way. And my oddity is d- d- he he's a he's a spirit of some sort, some sort of presence, something something old and and powerful. He embodies smoke and and he grants me some of his power in exchange for all my services. Where did you encounter this entity? He came to me. Where? When? In a cell, a cage. It was a few years ago and I had been captured. A, a job went wrong and he told me he could get me out. Is that all he offered you? Well, it was always conditional. It was always a a pact, a longer pact. He's he's the reason I I came aboard this ship in the first place. He has goals of his own. He has something that he's that he's trying trying to do, and I and I don't I don't fully understand it. But for some reason, he needed me aboard this ship. If I may, Kendo, I would like yep. to know if that is anything that rings any bells with any of my studies. Be like an investigator or something like that? Like, yeah, have I yeah, heard yeah. of an entity like that? Do I know of these things? Like, You probably have come around. Uh, many different cultures have uh, various beliefs on the many spirits of this world. So, yeah, I, I would definitely say that this falls under your purview of information you could have gathered. So, yeah, g- give me an investigate on this. Or not an investigate your, like, wordsmith, your sea scholar move. My sea scholar move. Yeah, so when you encounter strange, dangerous knowledge related to your uh, pursuits, roll plus spitfire. Cool. That's a seven. Okay, on a hit, ask one question about it, and the fates, me, will answer honestly, and you are compelled to learn more at any cost. So ask one question. Um, are these types of contracts able to be, like, escaped in means other than death. Mm. Yes. There are many ways uh, one can separate oneself uh, from a contract with a spirit. There are, I mean, if this is a contract that is uh, particularly just about, you know, possession, uh, you can uh, potentially exercise it uh, through various means. Uh, The Church of the First Song has various rites and rituals around uh, such things. There is, I mean, you can negotiate your contract potentially depending on the spirit that you have made that contract with. You can use an intermediary uh, if uh, you happen to know an arm of the many-armed god uh, who could commune with the many-armed god to act as a uh, intermediary in negotiations with uh, the spirit, uh, the many-armed god being the god of the sea, potentially also the sea itself, an entity of law, order, and uh, contracts specifically. There are tons of magic that exists in the world that interact with the spiritual in this way. There are potentially many options in order to separate uh, a person from a spirit that they have had con- uh, that they have made a contract with. Your options dependent on what that contract was and how powerful is the spirit that you are interacting with. Cool. So yes, Felix does not have to die in order to potentially free himself. Surprising. I'm definitely, like, writing all of those things down in, like, a margin of my notes of, like, possibilities. 
I think as you are writing down all of these different possibilities, right, in the margins of your notes, as they are coming up in your mental Rolodex of, you know, information that that you hold, uh, I think this is when you start feeling that curious urge, right? Like, okay, we do have all of these possibilities. Which of these possibilities are going to work? I, In order to narrow down the options, I need to know how powerful this spirit is. I need to know what the contract is specifically, like all of these different things. Like, is this a Belanusian spirit? Is this a Zegan spirit? Is this, like, where is the spirit from? That can change options in the way that it interacts with people. And as all of these different things, I, I think that curiosity and that- You, like, mm, see in Avery's eye, like, eyes, like, as, as grave as some of this situation is, there is, like, a little bit of, like, a twinge of, like, excitement, like, Avery has found a new hyperfixation that he is going to like pursue and figure out and like pull apart. And that is like the thing he wants to do that is smaller and more manageable than the bigger thing that he has. Rest in peace, Donnie. Overall. Yeah. <laughs> so Avery looking at Felix, I can fix him. <laughs> this is a puzzle and i need to solve it <laughs> i'm making you my project now exactly <laughs> amazing exactly yeah as you're feeling this curiosity i'm gonna go ahead and say uh you are compelled to know more by any means necessary are you going to attempt to stand your ground against this curious compulsion um, I'd like to just so that I don't immediately derail everything that's going on right now. Like, I, I think Avery knows on a level there's more important big discussion to be yeah. had. So, like, yeah, going to stand my ground just to see if, like, I don't become. Before you roll, uh, yeah. we got to we got to ask, uh, who are you spending bond with that is relevant, that is going to help you uh, and not like necessarily physically, but like you use as like an emotional mental anchor to stay grounded and stay focused in this moment. Uh, I would love to use my bond with Felix because I'm, I'm looking, analyzing, picking apart the things that Felix has said, but I can also tell that Felix is under a lot of stress and a lot of pressure right now. And maybe an inquisition is not the correct path at this second. <laughs> yeah. How much bond are you spending? I think I only have one, so. Okay, cool. Uh, so you will roll plus one. Come on, dice. Come on, baby. That's an eight. Ooh, on a seven Wait, to nine. No, so it's an eight plus, oh, that's still just a nine. Dang it. Yeah. Okay, on a seven to so nine, close. choose one. You take a weakness, you permanently lose one rank equal to the bond you spend, or... You're in a worse position than before. Um, I will lose a rank with... It has to be Felix. It, it has is, to be Felix? It Aww. is with the person that you spent that bond with. That makes me sad. because That cause does like, make me sad. No one has, no one has are rank you, with are Felix. Are you positive that it has to be? I'm 100% positive. You could take a weakness... Y'all are probably that went so well last time, though. I mean, you'll probably sleep before we get off the ship. Well, that uh, depending on the weakness that I give you, that doesn't matter. Yeah. It's not by sleep that you cure. Not all of them are cured by sleep. All of them have different uh, things that cure them. Come on. You don't want to lose your only rank with Felix or make things worse? I, I don't want that. I also don't want that. Because <laughs> I think I, it's I, sad. I, and I yeah. think I don't think it makes sense with the story that I'm trying to build here. Can I defend my case at least with like what I wanted to do with losing the one Understood. with Bryn? Yes. Um, I was thinking with like the last couple interactions that I've had with Bryn have been her telling me that like everything's fine when it's not, and now she finally has kind of admitted that everything's not fine with mm -hmm. the things that I'm hearing and experiencing, and that feels a little bit like some betrayal. Mm -hmm. Um, so I was going to say, like, from that standpoint, I, under I understand but... that standpoint specifically with this move, like Bryn has nothing to do with, with what's happening right yeah, now. Yeah. With what's happening. This is between you, your compulsion, and now you have pulled Felix mentally and emotionally into that. All right. I'll take a weakness. Fuck okay. it. <laughs> I'm giving you the weakness book fever. 
You are compelled when seeing new books or knowledge to learn and read at the expense of all other activities. Uh, the way to cure this is to hurt yourself in a stupor. What this is, I think, is that like you are bottling up this emotion right now, this innate curiosity of like, oh, I need to figure out all of these things. And you're bottling it up to like for the sake of Felix, but that doesn't make that curiosity go away. You've just pushed it to the back of your mind where it can linger and fester and like grow essentially. Like it's in the back of your mind, but you're key, you're having to actively like continue to push that thought back, you know? The hand is just, on the door, yeah. Exactly, yes. And so that is what is happening right now. Felix, I think just continues, he says, and from then on, it was, well, whenever I wanted to do something extraordinary, it was part of an exchange. And most of the time, it never, well, it, it never got personal. It never got this close. Thorin looks at you, Felix, and asks, I really only need to know one thing, at least right now. The way I see it, you have... Binds on your wrist, one for each. Do you or do you not want to be free of them? I think Felix looks a little, a little confused, almost as if he had never thought about that. And he says, "Free of? You, you mean of? I think I, I think he even like just like in response to your metaphor. I think he just like looks at his at his wrists and." He he just says, these are all I've ever been. I've I've been an assassin since far longer than I'd like to admit. And I and and even then I was I was mediocre. I couldn't do everything that they asked me to do. I tried, but I got caught and now I'm good. Now I'm now I'm 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 there is presently. A fake, but nonetheless decapitated head floating in the center of our little, uh, little therapy group we're having right now. These are the kinds of demons that are going to keep coming up with the kinds of things you're involved in, Lad. You don't have to make a decision for how you want to lead your life right here and now in this moment. But what I can tell you, not as a threat, but as a reality, at least in the matter of the sparrows, I don't see how... You being on this ship can coexist with that allegiance. That's what caught up with you to begin with. With all this, right? They asked you to kill someone on the ship. Well, yes. I don't know the nature of your spirit. Maybe they can be reasoned with, maybe they can't. I'd love to talk to them. But at the very least, if you're tangled up with the sparrows, I can promise you whatever you are without them, is not worth what you are with them. Not really. That's my piece, of course. Felix, Felix uh, kind of looks up at, at, at Thorin and, and he, just, he just says, why have you even let me continue this far in the conversation? I am, I'm a danger to everyone here. Why have you all not tried to drive me overboard yet if you want me to be honest it's wouldn't be much of a challenge and so it's worth hearing you out i suppose so it's a lot harder to forgive myself for making a mistake than it is to break another finger can we talk about that Bryn? i'm not sure it's quite important avery but if you think it's necessary of course i mean you broke yourself apart. I've been apart before, and I'll be put back together again. To the ends of getting us all in one room? You could have, again, like Felix said before, just come and grabbed us. I wanted to make sure we had each other's attention, and maybe a bit brash. It's the way I do things, Avery. Just concerned. That makes two of us, to be sure. I'm worried about all of you. Things haven't been quiet or sane for quite some time here on this vessel. Um, well, I guess more recently, up until our little soiree at the port, 
things have been a bit mundane, and now that, you know, we're from the frying pan to the fire, as they say, our communication's breaking down. The way we speak to one another, it's hurting, and I can see it. Felix. Yes? You asked why I haven't thrown you off this ship, thrown you overboard. Why you and of us haven't. Bryn gave her answer. I want to give you mine. I'm old. <laughs> You're not the first friend I've had in low places. Not the exact same situation as your own. But a good chap. Lovely ladies. People cast adrift. That deserved better. People that had to do what they had to do. I, 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 frankly, I, I have this soft spot for you. I don't know. I want you to know that you have an option. And for you to make the choice before anyone's escorted off a ship. But it will come down to a choice that you have to make. But I I hope you'll stay with us, Felix. Felix just kind of looks around the room and just kind of like lingers on each person for, for a moment. And he his his voice gets gets shaky and he says, I'm scared. I know he's listening to this. I know he's hearing everything I'm saying, everything he probably doesn't want me to say. And he is always here. I'm scared of every every night that I don't give him exactly what he wants. I am scared to go to sleep. Not because I might not wake up, but because I might I might wake up to something 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 horrifying that he has that he has wrought and i i he seems to me a curious little devil how about this every time he comes to you he asks for something yes he wants something well not every time but most of the time yeah next time he comes knocking he may already know from this conversation you tell him that i'd love for the three of us to have a chat also love to offer any services in that case. A spirit will not necessarily be exercised from this ship. We are, uh, as you may have noticed, quite open to the peculiar, but... The same goes for me, Felix. You know that. I'm always willing to lend a hand. You see Katarina is... I was wondering. <laughs> ...in the corner still, like, near the area where she threw up sitting on a barrel angled away from all of you, but still like glancing over every now and then has been listening the whole time. She is just silent, you know, she has, she's not adding anything to the conversation. I think it's quite obvious that she feels out of her depth right now. There's a lot happening that she was not aware of and does not feel capable of being able to deal with any of it in the same way that all of you seem to have some competency in a way or some willingness to even engage with this thing that may be beyond you. And I think as you all are kind of sitting in this very brief silence, as everyone has just kind of given their like verbal, like we would help you with this. Like we'll talk, like we'll figure something out. You all hear it. The voice that seeps in like smoke. No. No. <laughs> well, since we're all gathered. And I think smoke begins to seep in <laughs> gotta go. I through gotta go. the cracks of this ship, heavy like a fog clinging to the ground, slowly beginning to fill the room. Can I say as that happens and like the hole starts to fill with smoke, all of the parts of Bryn that normally glow start to get a little dimmer. Yeah, yeah. I see cats out of the bag. Felix has spilled his guts to all of you. A wonderful assassin. Very secretive. <laughs> well, actually, uh, I think it's uh, you has probably dropped the cat a little bit. Uh, I don't know that Felix would have been found out so quickly if uh, your diversion was not quite so dramatic. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. Uh, I didn't catch your name. And you won't. You see, there's a thing about smoke. As, like, it continues to fill this room, clinging to the ground, but never, like, pluming out and, like, obscuring vision, but just thickening along the ground. Smoke, as it stands, obscure, 
It hides its shade. But there's another thing smoke does. It signals. You don't know there's a fire until you feel the heat. I'm sure you're all wondering why I've gathered you here today. You haven't gathered shit, frankly, if we're being so frank. You may believe that if you will. <laughs> it is a pleasure to meet all of your acquaintances. Thorn, Bryn, Avery Morgan. Bryn, like, kind of glares when he says mm -hmm. her name. Like, kind of scowls. I'd like to say that when when this being starts to, like, appear, I grab my bag with Eldorus in it, and I, I pull it out of her spot, like, into my lap. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so defensive, Avery. What? Just because I wanted to take a little look into your notebook, you think that I'm just going to pry it from your hands? Sneak it out from under you? No. That's what Felix says. And Felix. Poor little Felix. I feel like Felix has, like, closed his eyes. He's he's almost, like... Like, I think he's, like, closed his eyes and, like, is covering his ears, but he could still hear it perfectly, of course. Mm-hmm. Oh, Jesus. As for the reason I've arranged for this little meeting of ours, I would like to offer my help and assistance in whatever it is you may need. I can assure you I have no ill intent for the ship or the people on it. On the contrary, even, I'm quite invested in this ship's success. We're gonna pass, thanks. Uh, we will need you to help with, uh, I understand there is already something in the, in the pipe works, uh, as for something going on with the sparrows, which I appreciate. Uh, we'll need to iron a few things out with that, of course, sounds like there's something that you need it that doesn't exist anymore, this or that, I haven't capture all the pieces, but I'm sure we'll figure it out and work something out. Uh, you're a man of deals, I understand. Of course. I thought you just said you didn't need my help. I quite literally just explained to you that the ship itself will not need anything from you, except for the fact that you already have something in the pipeworks in relation to Felix, but it is not relation to the ship. On the contrary... You believe that Felix being on this ship, having defied the will of the Sparrows, means that this ship is going to be fine? N n no, I don't. Oh. So it does seem like it is, in fact, in the benefit of this ship for me to assist you. Am I wrong? Yes. Okay, then. We will wait on that, but that is not a decision that will just be made... I can make whatever decision I would like. You can't. Oh, I can't. You can do whatever you want, but it is not a decision that will be made at a consensus with everyone. You will be acting of your own volition. <laughs> and if you act of your own volition, then you will be treated thusly as a separate entity. Why are you laughing? It is so funny seeing how mortals think. You believe you have power here. I didn't say that. Well, it seems that you believe any decision you make will matter where you are now. No, I don't. Oh. There's a difference between something happening and you allowing it to happen, you inviting it in, and something happening and it being the, your agency being taken away. If you choose to take our agency away from us, that's your own business. Uh-huh. You have not been invited in. Do you think I'm a vampire? Okay, great, you're not a vampire. Were you a man once, may I ask? Or did you come from the realm of spirit? Why would I answer that question? I mean, I can easily answer the question. But again, I don't need to. Uh, no, you I don't. have... Uh, uh-huh, okay. If we're ever going to work together as all, well, I'll have to know more about you. We're not working together. If you ever want that, if that's something that you want then we're going to have to learn more about each other. That's how this works. That's just reason. It has nothing to do with being mortal or not. You're not the first immortal thing anyone here has dealt with. Is that the consensus of everyone? So Avery would then look up and over at Thorin and kind of look around at the different areas of smoke and just say, I fully agree with Thorin. I don't, I don't think that's in question. Um, I think while like, they're talking... Bryn is kind of, like, moving her hand through the smoke and, like, manipulating the smoke by, like, pushing it around and, like, lifting it up in her hand. 
regardless of whether we want you here or choose to have you aboard or trust the words you say, which I don't believe we should, you're here regardless, and you want something. What is stopping us from trying our hardest from removing you right now? What is there that you give to us? Well, if we look at the past several days, uh, your safety and your lives... I see that you've only brought chaos aboard hmm. this vessel. What chaos have I Trouble. Brought? Trouble for sure. I believe Felix wouldn't be in the position he's in now. I believe he'd be on better terms with the Union, matter of fact, and the Painted Fleet. I've sure. only ever done what Felix has asked of me. Any chaos that you would see from me is purely through Felix. We're made to believe that Felix makes actions unopposed, without your influence, without your guidance. I ask for I things in return for his asks. But Felix, outside of you completing our agreements for things that you have asked me, have I asked you to do anything to harm or disturb the people of this ship? Felix... Felix just, uh, Felix shakes his head. What is it you want? You crave a knowledge? There are big things in the future for this ship. Oh, I've seen them many times. As of I. Uh... And I doubt there's something you've seen that I haven't. <laughs> How old are you, Brent? A hundred? Two hundred? I lose count, but I think... My memories span further beyond my physical body. Welcome to the club. I have seen the turn of this world for countless aeon. I have been here since the second falling of the sky. I was here before the world flooded. I was here when trains connected every major city, every landscape. I was here before the cathedral. And I'll be here long after. Then what use have you of my knowledge? Avery says with the, with the notebook. It is. <laughs> the use I have of your knowledge isn't for me. You believe Felix is the only one whom I have communed with? There are many people around. Lots of people ask things. And the wise ones pay their debts. So it's a pyramid scheme. <laughs> <laughs> if you would like to see it that way. I suppose you have client confidentiality then. Of a sort. Can the information of who wants this knowledge be bought? Now you're playing the game. <laughs> Why yes. Bryn, what are you doing? I haven't made a deal. Understood. Of course. Let me hear the terms and the bargain. How about this? I can offer you both the name of the one who has asked for this information in return for power. I can also release Felix from our agreements over the arrow. In return, I do need a piece of meteorite. Partially because, well... Holding the illusion that keeps Katarina safe is rather taxing. There's a lot of eyes I must obscure. The meteorite's for you, not for the other person looking for knowledge. It's for me. What do you know of the Celestials? The Celestials, well... If you hear a hum and you want meteorite, what purpose does it have for you? Do you know how spirits are born? I think a chill rolls down Brent's spine. Every era, upon its changing, with the falling of the sky, new spirits are born. Born from the change the sky brings. All of us, born from the potentiality of what a new world could bring. And those of us already here experience the change as well, against our will. Pieces of the fallen sky help ground us in a way. Focuses our power. I'm sure you're familiar. You know that those arrows are different. 
you know that other meteorite won't suffice, but yet you're willing to lessen your bargain. Why? Consider it an act of goodwill for a new relationship. If I accept this deal, what does it look like for me? You have the name, and you lose a piece of meteorite. I don't want you crawling inside my mind. I've got enough people in there to begin with. I don't need to crawl on your mind. I'm merely just going to speak a name. I understand. There are boundaries. <laughs> Avery, Thorin, and Felix. Your thoughts? Felix, uh, you know, opens his eyes, and he, he like opens his mouth as if to like try to try to say something and i and i don't i don't i don't think he can i think he just like he he just chokes on the words do we have a deal i have a really risky idea and i don't know if everyone else is cool oh, with it no oh <laughs> state it and we'll figure it out is there a way that i could potentially use hoodwink i have polished a negative too use hoodwink <laughs> um <laughs> You use Hoodwink oh to gosh. imbue a piece of meteorite that I give to da- Damian uh-huh. in like a way to like indate a piece of myself similar to like my Ooh. bind to the ship with the spirit. Ooh, that's interesting. Hmm. Yeah. Why not? Spicy. I'm curious with everyone else. This, I mean, this is, this could, could go really not good. If it's Pretty what spicy. Bryn would do, then it's what Bryn would do. Yeah, I. Yeah, <laughs> so. <laughs> play do to find out. Risk. Yeah, play to find could, out what I, happens. Like baby. I could offer my 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 take on it, but I think it is. What's your take on this? I mean, my take on this is is like fucking around with Damien seems like a really 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 bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but also no, yeah, you know. Yeah, I'll just, you know, whatever needs to happen should happen. Oh, I was going to say, I have to spend luck. I have no luck left. Because I use luck to fucking bring the head down. Um, yeah, no luck left. Oh, Shit out of luck. Fuck. Shit out of luck. Because so I was going to see if I could use fucking the star caller move. Mm. You have, you have a point in something. You have a point from prophesized still. I do? Yeah. This was from a thing that you did at the beginning of this day before everyone went uh, on their stuff. You rolled a seven to nine because I also got a raise. You may receive a prophecy. Uh, And if you've already taken Starstruck Weakness, you take minus one. Okay, cool. You So at any time in the next few days, you can pull luck strings and prophesize something strange or fortunate to occur. Describe what happens in the prophecy. It will happen, logic and fates permitting. So you can... Holy shit. Okay, yeah. yeah. Oh, Jesus. Okay. That's not a hoodwink roll, though? I guess it's just like... I, I'm saying, I'm saying that grin. you can use the prophesize to have this thing that you need for, the, uh, for, for your hoodwink. That you don't have to spend luck here to be able to get the thing that you need to be. I already used luck though. I have no luck left. No, that's I, what I I'm saying. Luck, that's um, what I'm saying. You don't have to use luck because you've already prophesized it. This is a thing that has happened. Fortune is in your. You don't have to use luck to get the thing you need. You can yeah. roll this hoodwink and already have the thing that you need for it. Is what I'm saying. Hoodwink doesn't. Yeah, need, I said to roll the hoodwink. Yeah, though. which you don't need luck for. No, but I'm saying like using luck to get a plus one because I have a minus. I two. see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, because 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 uh. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, fair, 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 fair. Uh. Fair. Are we able to help in any way with this? Because then that would get you a plus one. I think Avery's the only one to be able to help, or maybe Felix and Avery because like Felix has more knowledge of Damian, but Fe- Avery has more knowledge of the Celestials right now. S- yeah, I mean, if you can find a way, if you can justify a way for, you know, y- how you think Avery can assist or anyone else can ins- assist in this way, and you have a uh, bond with uh, Bryn, you could 100% spend that bond in order to assist. I don't really know how I would assist you in this if this is you kind of doing this so covertly that probably we don't even I th- know. I think... I think that you would basically pick up on what's happening because you would now have a way of tapping into like Bryn's like 
experience. Yeah. You would see what Bren is doing. Yeah, I think what this feels like for Avery in this moment is, like, as Bryn is attempting to, like, put a piece of herself into this media, right, you feel the uh, hum from Bryn begins to hum in sync with this piece of media, right? And as it's, like, being, like, moved and, like, held out, it, like, has its own hum that is still the same hum as Bryn. It feel like they feel like they are one in this moment. Mm. And one thing I think I was doing about offering is, like, the remaining vial of the, like, infused, like, meteorite-infused mm-hmm. icker that has, like, Bryn's blood in it. Yeah, so I I mean, if, if I can feel that hum yeah. and put together those kinds of pieces that Bryn might be trying to pull something mm-hmm. um, with this, I'll just, yeah, I'll, I'll focus into the hum. I'll, I'll like, okay. let it kind of overtake me as well. Bryn getting, like, confirmation with everyone, like, this is an okay deal that we're okay with making. Um, Bryn, like, from her, like, side and, like, her pouches, like, pulls out the vial of remaining ichor is like, would this suffice for you? And like, I think Bryn like swirls the liquid inside and as she does, like the glass starts to like vibrate. All right, roll this hoodwink. You got this. Holy Jesus Christ. I got plus one from using a bond with Avery, yeah? Uh, Yeah, Avery spins uh, his bond with you. Got you. Oh my God, this is... Fuck, uh, that's an eight. Oh. On a hit, you've pulled it off. On a seven to nine, pick one. They'll catch one soon. You cause collateral damage. Your deception works too well. Oh, fuck. I think I caused collateral damage. Okay. Yeah. Oh, God. You hold out oh. this vial, and you hear, like, almost like the grumblings of, like, thoughtfulness. This should do. And the smoke starts to swirl up from the ground beneath you in tendrils. And the smoke kind of like swirls around you almost as if caressing you and then moving Uh down your arm and like enveloping your hand where the vial is. And then it just falls away back down to the ground and the vial is no longer there. I have a question. Can I feel the vial? No, not in this moment. It is not in the same space as you. And as you, like, try to reach out to feel for it, you do not feel it. All right. Felix Gormier, you are freed from the burden of your debt. You no longer owe me the meteorite arrow. And as for the name of the one who wanted this information, who asked me for this information for power. Concert master Cassius Morgan the third. What the fuck? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Was this a surprise to you, Avery? I'm fucking going nuts. <laughs> I also fucking want to it. take this moment to make sure that you guys are still understanding that you've only ever known Avery as Avery Alistair. Yep. Yeah, yep. I know. So... I'm just going nuts. <laughs> I think it might have gotten cut off earlier, but as every as Damien was naming everyone, he only oh, said shit, everyone's right. first name, but specifically said your Avery first and last name as Avery Moore. Oh, he did. He did. No, he. It did. might have oh, gotten. I, I, I think it went by without people hearing it, but no, that is what yeah, he you, did no, say. No, you one hundred percent said it. Oh, fuck. Oh, dang, you said, I, I would have said something. Oh, okay, well, all right, I guess that moment's passed. Yeah. yeah. I would have, like, Avery would have said something. Smoke voice, you're taking notes. I think it's an easy thing for Avery to have missed. Yeah. And I, I think it would be, honestly, like, like, Felix's reaction to hearing that was probably something along the lines of, like, no, nah, I, didn't, I didn't think that was Avery's last name. <laughs> Yeah, they're probably different. all just like, yeah. oh, whatever. Like, they're just like... Yeah. Yeah. I think, huh. yeah, I think it went by without people noticing because the event itself is always so big that, like, I, I, I think genuinely probably most people missed it. So I guess yeah. then the question is, is if everybody missed it, then are they making the connection now? Pro- probably not. I, no. Okay, cool. Yes. Gotcha. 
What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, I mean, here's a question. Does Avery connect the dots that Damien said his name earlier? Oh, yeah. Avery would have immediately clocked it, but not but not in the way of like, like you said, Kendo, like it's probably not something that I immediately clock as like him calling me out. Yeah. But it's just me going, that's my name. Yeah. And I'm going, oh, shit, these people don't know my name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When yeah. this rolls around. Mm-hmm. Holy shit. Brynn's like, <laughs> oh, fuck, what movie is that where it's like, they like fucking like, oh, yeah, like, here's the mass villain. And they like just show like a normal guy. And it's like, oh, no, it's like fucking who? Oh, what is it? Where they like take control of like, it's like finally, I can find out who oh, Spider-Man yes. is. <laughs> yes, and he takes off his mask and he's like, I don't know who the fuck this is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that yeah. Was and, guy. and that's how it is for almost all of you, right? Yeah. Where you're like, yeah. I don't fucking... Actually, hold on, no, that's not true. That's so not true. That's all so of you true, know who right? this yeah. man is. Yeah, This you is Wait, Concert cool. Master Cassius Morgan III is the like, second most powerful person in the Marvelian Empire right next to the Queen. Oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> This is this yeah. is a like this is like he is, oh. he is not the pope he is an it's archbishop like the who works with, yeah, yeah who works with the with, uh, with the crown who has yeah. technically more political power than the pope because he has the ear of the queen yeah oh this is um oh yeah this is maybe a this is maybe a big deal and this is him checking in on his son because he hasn't fucking heard from was, him in a long fucking it. time. And now you maybe hear, now you can maybe connect some dots as to like why Avery maybe has some connections and money. <laughs> it would be one of Thorne's first thought to be like, okay, why is Cassius Morgan? Why the fuck does he care? Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I think Brin kind of looks at everyone else in the room and is like, like wide eyed. It's like, this person has interest in our ship? Like, why? <laughs> Not just that. This person has an interest in our ship and is also tied to the demon who is <laughs> tied yeah, to yeah, Felix, yeah. which also is fucking wild because th- this situation is heretical as fuck. The like yes. The, yes. whatever spirit or demon like that's not what the church does. That is not the church. <laughs> the Church of the First Song's doctrine is that all spirits and demons came from the sour notes of the <laughs> un- unnamed <laughs> goddess when she was stringing together the melody of the world. They don't fuck with spirits. They don't fuck with demons. That shit is stuff they exercise as soon as they come in contact with it. Learning that that the current minister of culture of the, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> of the of the holy marvellian empire is actively in cahoots and in contract with this seemingly ancient smoke spirit is wild can i ask a clarity point that may not be clear so i just want to see if this is clear to avery or not is it just that this other person who is in contract, my my father, who's in contract with this demon, um, was interested in the inform, like just happens to be interested in the information I have, or is he contracting Damien to look into where I am? Is it the information or is it me? I don't think you know that intuitively. I I think okay. that I think. I mean, quite literally, where your mind is going to take, it could be either of these things, is probably what Avery is thinking right now. Cool. Or both. Or both. <laughs> yeah. Touche. Why not both? Yeah, why not both? <laughs> cool. That's cool. Well, I've done my part. And there's nothing more you can give us. No information, no deal. There's nothing more that we want for now. Are you sure? There's always more, huh? We will commune with you again later. Are you sure you're not interested in why? No. I think it's very visible on Avery's face that he's interested in why, but... Brynn, like, why. starts, like, digging, like, her nails into her thigh and is, like, trying really hard not to say anything. Um, oh, 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 <laughs> When you see new knowledge, you're compared to learn, read, and learn yeah. about it. Expensive all other... 
Oh. Activities. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Avery. I wasn't gonna say it, but you, you find I yourself. That was book fever. That's not uh, a book. It says book fever, but it says compel when He's saying new books book. or knowledge. Okay. Oh, and then it says shit. learn and read, but learn being the operative word here. You find yourself compelled. Do you stand your ground? The com- the compel goes on the stack. No, if he if he said. Are you sure you don't want to know why? I think just without thought, it just comes out of Avery's mouth. He's like, of course we want to know why. Oh, well, dear Avery, if that's what you want, I could give you that information. I would, of course, need something in return. Avery, be careful what you trifle with. Thorn's dead. <laughs> so it's just you're like, you guys, you're doing the wrong things. You're doing the exact wrong things. Do. We were supposed to stand strong. We were supposed to stay together. We were a united front. I love this. We need a united I love front. This. Thorn lays on the ground, looks over at Katarina, hoping to make eye contact. Hopefully, does and waves hi. I love this. I love this. Like, like Damien shows up. And and Thorn's like, we're not making any deals. And Bryn is like, let's make a deal. And then Thorn's <laughs> like, we don't want to know what this is all about. And Avery's like, I would like we to know what this is all about. Right? I really like. Okay, this is like this is like the sleepover. And Thorn's like, guys, we are not playing the Ouija board. We are not playing the Ouija board. <laughs> Bryn and Avery are like, Ouija board, Ouija board. Guys, 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 guys. What's your favorite color? Guys, we gotta be we gotta be more quiet. And my mom's gonna hear us. We, uh, guys, my mom's gonna hear us. <laughs> How many beers did you take? No, we can't take more than two. Avery has like an arm full of beers. <laughs> but like you see, like this is the temptation, right? This is how this works. This yeah. is how he yeah. keeps and getting Thorin people. And Thorin knows yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, and we yeah. all rationally know that, but <laughs> right. But as soon as it's like dangled in front of you, the thing you want, why not yeah. grab it? It's there. When are you going to be able to grab it again? And so, Avery, like, grits yeah. his teeth and says, what do you want? I mean, you already know. The Lopa. Oh, shit, dude. I'd love to stand my ground now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now you want to stand your ground? Yeah. Okay, yeah, cool. Cool, cool, yeah. cool. Yeah, because at the expense of everything else is, who okay. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Especially okay. knowing who it's going to now. Can I use, can I use a bond with Avery to help Avery? I mean, we're in we're in spring, right? We are in spring. I will say you would have. I could use star color. You would have to spend luck for that. Oh. Yeah, because they get a bonus based on the amount of luck you spend. Yeah. So yeah. Then you get a plus zero bonus though. Let's go. <laughs> in order to roll the stand your ground, you need to spend bond with someone, Avery. Who are you spending bond with? Who is helping anchor you in this moment? I was going to say Thorin because of the the fact that, like, Thorin's the one saying, like, we shouldn't make these deals. We shouldn't be doing this. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Um, it doesn't say that you can't assist uh, a stand your ground role. So if you would like to assist, you may do so by spending one bond you have with that person and giving them a plus one. And then telling me how you're assisting. Yeah. Um, as, like, Avery's kind of tunnel vigilant, vis- visioning on this, like, on Damian and, like, what Damian is saying, I think Bren is kind of just speaking through it, and just, like, Avery, you know what's in those notebooks, more so than I do. You know the power of them, especially if whatever use they have for them, you know that you can't let them out of your sight. Okay. So now you're roll plus two. Can I also spend luck? Yeah. Like for another plus. Holy shit, we're getting the cool. turbo roll. Yeah. Right. You, can take, uh, you can spend luck to get uh, take plus one forward. So you're rolling this with plus three. Awesome. Holy moly. That's a 14, 14. Holy shit. Okay, get fucked, Damien. Get fucked. Yeah, no, so you, uh, in this moment, kind of like overthinking what uh, Thorin said and hearing uh, Bryn's advice kind of, allows you to uh, hold on and, and ground yourself and, and realize, mm, maybe, hold on a second. Maybe not. Maybe not. Over my dead body. Okay, then. Tell him to go fuck himself. Ooh. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Spicy. Are you sure you want me to give him those words? Because I can assure you right now, he doesn't know the two of us have talked. In doing so, it will alert him. So, Avery, 
I want you to know now that you're seen and valid in your opinion. <laughs> I, I, wh wh whomever and how I, I don't like, I've, what I've heard sounds like a bastard. Don't know what he is to you, but. I'm going to agree with Warren on this one. I don't think particularly now might be a good time. There's a time and a place, Avery. The cloak is our friend as long as we can have it. I send no word. Be gone. Oh, uh, no. Please. <laughs> I will not be gone. God. Uh, I don't think you all understand. As long as Felix is here, I will be here. Perhaps. Maybe even a little longer. We'll see. <sighs> Again, I mean you all no harm. I'm quite invested in your success, and I would like to offer my assistance when able. But understand that you are not the only one to whom I must assist. I have contracts everywhere, and I have done my best to keep you all involved as much as I can. If you are so invested in our success, then why is the concert master of the Marvellian Empire? That's a question. Why is the concert master of the Marvellian Empire interested in the the going ons of the ship? In contact with you. Oh, why does anyone get in contact with a spirit? Power, money, riches, weed. <laughs> I'm sorry. The yes, but reason. you must see how the two are diametrically opposed. If you say that you are, you have our interest at heart, and yet contract with people who would actively harm. Their business is their own. And again, I've done my best to keep you all safe and secure as possible. My business with the concert master is truly of no consequence to this ship as a whole. I wish I could say it's been a pleasure, but... Still, it's uh, good to have everything out in the open. I'm sure we'll hear again from you. You don't know that you have to leave now, but unless there's anything else... I have one thing before you leave. Yes? You feel the hum, Damien, no? Of course I do. Of course. Have you spoken to a sister lately? When you were back on the island, I asked no bargains of you. I do not wish to make none. I Merely one person connected to... The hum, like yourself, to another. Have I spoken to a sister recently, other than yourself? Of course. No. Understood. And I have a question for you, Kendo. Yeah. Just a little question I was yeah. thinking about. Uh huh. Depending on, like, you know, how the whole hoodwink thing works, and how, like, I, as a person, am connected to the ship, and I can hear what's on the ship, can I scry through Damien or no? Can you scry through Damien? Huh. Ah, uh huh. I don't know. And part, part of that is, I think you reach out again, trying to connect back to that, that piece of yourself. Yeah. And yeah. I think the thing that you get is like, the reason why you didn't feel it is that because what became of that starlight fluid is no longer in a place. It yeah. is dispersed yeah. in a thin layer. There mm. is no singular space where Damien is. The reason why I'm asking is I'm wondering if, like, do I become, as a piece of myself, incorporated into his thoughts? <sighs> How does that work? If not, that's cool. I just I no, 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 no. Kinda... okay, okay. I know what this is, will allow you to do. Yeah, you can size up Damien whenever I want. Yeah. Damn. Okay. Cool. Okay. Yeah, that rolls. Cool. Got it. Well, it seems that perhaps our business for today has come to an end. Unless there's anything else I can help you all with. Rinse it silent. No. Avery's no just one. thinking. Fuck you, very loudly toward, in Damien's direction, but <laughs> doesn't say anything. <laughs> no questions, no wants or desire. That would seem not. Understood. Well, if you need me, you know where to find me. <laughs> Just call my name. And the smoke begins to seep away back towards the edges of the room and up the walls. Avery, like turns like as it's leaving the room and just yells after it 
We don't fucking know your name. It's Damien. His name's Damien. Amazing session, everyone. Thank you all so much for being a part of it. Lots of spicy new things, lots of great new intrigue, lots of uh, twists and turns this little journey has taken us. Yeah. Twisting a little too much, turning a little too much. Turning a little too much? Oh, never enough. We're in the fall on corkscrew. <laughs> well, it is the end of this session. It is time for us to do the end game move. Thorin. Did you defeat a major foe? No. Gain significant treasure? No. Accomplish one of your goals? Yes. Put all doors to bed uh, and cleared the air with Bryn. Yep. Uh, so you get to choose to uh, mark one experience, add one to your rank with someone, or clear all of your weaknesses. I'm going to say this big thing with like Damien and like bringing all these pieces together, I will count this as a big finale. Uh, of a narrative thing. So you get to choose two rather than one of those. Oh, okay. Um, then I'll mark one experience and take rank. Thorin's going to finally take rank with Felix. Yay! Aww, wow. yay. yay! Amazing. Bryn, did you defeat a major foe? Mm -mm. Did you gain significant treasure? Knowledge is kind of like I do cons I do consider a considerable like piece of knowledge that is useful for your character or that your character is interested in. I'll count that as a treasure. Yippee! Uh, did you <laughs> accomplish one of your character's goals? I believe so. Yeah, I think you did as well. I've marked down that you did. Okay, awesome. What do I get for that? Yeah, uh, so you get to choose two from Mark 1 Experience. Add one rank with someone or clear all of your weaknesses. Currently I have the starstruck weakness, if I remember correctly. Or did you clear that last uh, time? We used that during um, uh, the moment with Averdry in the room. Remember? Yes, it doesn't leave. It doesn't leave until you clear that oh. weakness. Oh. Yes, you, you still oh. have starstruck um, until you okay. make a foolish decision or choose right now to clear that well. weakness. Well... I mean, Actually, uh, wait, you might have made a foolish decision <laughs> by making a deal with Damien. Me knowing the consequences of the thing that you did, knowing wh <laughs> what, what is going to happen, I'm going to go ahead and say that was a foolish that's decision. Cool. That's so you can cool clear that. that. That's, that's, that's neat. That's fun. The universe just told you. Bad this is me. Call, man. <laughs> a very interesting narrative call that I have oh, no for idea. Sure. I know what the consequence is. I have no idea when I'm going to use it. And that is delightful for That's, me personally. Is that not is that not my presence and in, in my purpose in this in this actual play? I, I hand you little gifts to hurt us and you go, <laughs> hmm, neat. <laughs> Marcy's my little blacksmith making knives for me to stab oh, everyone with. Yes. <laughs> if I was a better all right, uh, so you get to choose one, mark uh, an experience, or add, I uh, and am gonna add one take. Rank. I'm gonna take one rank with Thronin. <laughs> uh huh. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> and I'm gonna take a rank with. Can I take, 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 take a rank with Damien? Yes, I will. Yes, I will allow that. I love that. You're gonna need it. <laughs> cool. Ooh, that's even funnier if you use him to stand your ground, and then he's like, "Oh, you want my help?" Okay. <laughs> Okay, I can help. <laughs> That's so weird. Ooh, I love this. Ah, I love this game. Okay, cool. Avery, did you defeat a major foe? No. Gain significant treasure? Yes. Accomplish one of your character's goals? Yes. Amazing. You get to choose two from uh, clear all of your weaknesses, add one to your rank with someone, or mark one experience. I was like that Hana was not <laughs> I was just about, I was thinking all. earlier, it's like, okay, not it for like giving the download. <laughs> Because I, I was going to bring Hano. I, I was thinking about like, oh, yeah, I also bring Hano. And I was like, yeah. no. <laughs> yeah. But Katarina, she's in this. <laughs> Hano's really tired right now. I literally, Bryn spoke with Hano in her quarters and Bryn was like, you need space. <laughs> you need to rest. To be fair, the whole thing, the reason like why Katarina's here is because Bryn was like, Felix is trying to kill Katarina. Katarina's right here. Let's, yeah. how about we yeah, fix yeah. that? Um, so I'll clear my weakness, and I will take 
um, another XP, and I think I level up then. Ooh, amazing. Yeah, when you level up, you get to add plus one to a skill. You get to uh, choose to mark one additional luck every session, or you can take an advanced move. Come on, you know what you I, want. I, I don't. I, may I, like, ponder this off? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Felix. Yeah. Did you defeat a major foe? Nope. Did you gain significant treasure? Friendship. Friendship. Aww. <laughs> Aww. Uh, no. Uh, no. <laughs> I, I, potentially, if you are okay with this, I would consider Damien releasing you from a debt to be a okay. significant treasure. Yeah, hell, I'll take it. Okay. Did you accomplish one of your character's goals? Uh, yes. I believe we had talked about, like, you know, sort of renegotiating the the the, the deal, seeing yeah. as the arrow had been. Yeah, and uh, that kind of worked out. Yeah. Yeah, sounds so, good. Yeah. Awesome possum. Also, to remind us specifically, he did not release you from your debt for getting him that book. Just the yes. arrow. Yes, yes. Okay, cool. You get to choose two. Mark one experience, add one rank with someone, or clear all of your weaknesses. I am, I think it is uh, appropriate for the events of this. I'm going to add rank with both Avery and Thorin. Ooh, yeah, I like that. Okay, amazing. Awesome. Well, thank you, everybody, for listening to another episode of Whispers in the Sea. It's been very good for me personally. I hope it was good for you. Gus, where can people find you on the Internet? You can find me on the Internet on social media. Isn't that crazy how that works? Well, anyway, on those social socials media, you can find me uh, as August underscore Nobby, K-N-O-B-B-E. And I, I don't post much, but follow me anyway. It'll be cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hilda, where do you people find you or this podcast on the internet? You can't find me on the socials. Mwahaha. I mean, you could, but I have not ever said them here. So just find me in the Discord instead. Yeah. Which is on all of the Tales Yet Told <laughs> socials. Yeah. What's that social? Really you should join. It's fun. What's so, the oh, the, 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 uh, the at Tales Yet Told. Yeah. On Twitter. And isn't it just Tales Yet Told at, uh, for Tumblr as well and such? Yeah, it's at Tales Yet Told. Perfect. It, Tales Yet Told. If we're there, it's at Tales Yet Told. Exactly. Come And then join from us. there, you get to the Discord. And from there, mm -hmm. let's have a chat. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ellis, where can people find you on the internet? You can find me on Twitter at the handle Horror Writer, spelled W-H-O-R-E underscore or underscore the word writer. Amazing. Uh, Marcy, where can people find you on the internet? Hey, yeah, it's me, Marceline. Totally me, Marceline, from the episode you just listened to. You can find me over on Twitter at Soapy Squid. That's S-O-A-P-I-E Squid, like the animal. Um, you can also find me at BK.com. That's Burger King, the BK Lounge, the one and only. So yeah, totally me, Marceline. Back to you, Kendo. And you can find me everywhere on the internet that matters at Kendo Makes Films. If, uh, if you can't find me there, that place doesn't matter. So why are you there? <laughs> wow. Ridiculous. Oh, okay. Uh, well, uh, thank you all so much. And don't forget to go out, eat enough food, drink enough water, get enough sleep, and take care of yourself. Because self-care is very important, especially in the days we're living in right now. And don't forget to love yourself like we love you. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye.
proud member of the Rainbow Roll Network. Rainbow Roll. Our stories, our voices.